I am here in San Francisco with Corinne Johansson, founder and executive director of All Education Matters. And a couple of, well, I guess it was about a month ago, Corinne was on my radio show talking about student debt. And it's great to meet you in person, Corinne. You too. So, you know, it was shocking to me reading your blog and then having you on the show is hearing you talk about students who are swimming in so much debt that they're actually contemplating suicide. Yeah, it's, um, as I was saying to you earlier, uh, I'm not an interventionist, obviously. I'm just clearly not a therapist. And I'm an advocate for people with student loan debt, but that's quite different. Um, and so it's, it's the, but the outreach is important. And so what I've done is I, every time I write about it, I always put um, the, you know, the national suicide hotline on every piece. I don't do, I don't do images that, that trigger. And I, I have to admit, I, there was one way back uh, two years ago that I did, it was a painting. It's an impressionist painting. But I realize that that's just not healthy. I mean, you have to be really careful as a journalist when you're writing about this. So I, I always have just the numbers for suicide prevention. And what's terrible, though, is that, I mean, just like, last week I got this comment on my blog because I, you know, I, I moderate them. And um, this person was admitting that they had just been sitting in their car in their garage. Oh, my God. Yeah. And they said, but then I thought about my poor spouse. Ugh. You know, the other thing that killed me about this is we've got student debt just hit the trillion dollar mark. It's now more than credit card debt. Right. Why isn't this suicide angle getting more attention? Well, I mean, I think it, and when it comes to journalism, it's people want to have the, you know, the, the statistics on it. And, and right now, I know, I think with the CDC, the most recent in terms of just general suicides across the country and how they break it down, male, female, et cetera, ages, is... I think the most recent is 2008, uh, that, that, if memory serves me. You know, we're 2012. I mean, I, granted, it takes time to collect the data. Right. But, um, and the suicide community is really sort of, I don't want to say defensive, but they, you know, they worry too about uh, getting away from sort of other causes. And, and you know, because depression obviously is a huge factor. But when you think about it sociologically, even, even just the ideation, um, and not even going through with it, I think, is significant because it shows the level of where, you know, the emotional level where these people are. Right. And, and I think that's really important to talk about. Exactly. Now, when you, and you've done quite a few interviews with the national media. Do they ask you about these issues? Do they ask you maybe to get, put them in touch with someone? No. Really? The, I mean, there was one, there was one woman from a major outlet that did several years ago, but this, again, went back to needing statistics. Because there are plenty, I think there would be people who'd be willing to share. I've found some of them who are willing to share. Um, and I've written, you know, I've written, I know that some of them by name, of course, because a lot of them come flooding in anonymously. And, and, and I, you know, that might raise questions about, well, is it really, you know, what about the validity of that? But, I mean, when you read these posts, and I and I actually was interviewed on a local a television show, I, I will have to say, in, in New York, when I was in Occupy New York, and I read these letters, these notes out loud, and you, these are really, you, you know, these are really coming from the heart, mm. and it's just, um, you know, you feel this strange isolation and yet connection to the people, right? And and but I feel helpless, and I and it's it's also because it's such an unnecessary problem, ultimately. Well, talk more about that. I mean, if, if people, you, when you talk about things like debt or mortgages, there's that line, well, they sign the dotted line, right. they ask for it. So how do you respond to that? Well, the thing I always say is, well, first of all, I know, that, I know thousands of debtors now, and these are people who want to make good on their payments. They, they really do. But they, if you, if you are deciding whether or not to have to pay for medical bills, which I know people or your groceries for your kids, you're probably going to choose those over your student loans, despite the consequences. And so the, we know that unemployment is devastating here. I mean, that's the, this is a jobs problem to a degree, but it's also the fact that we, we the way we finance education. Right. And it's really, I mean, Uncle Sam is to blame. I mean, the private loans are a big problem too, but, but they are the biggest lender. And then the, the Department of Education has these collectors that are on these great contracts that just try to squeeze as much out as they can. So they're actually going after oh, these, yes. oh, these college yes. grads, big time. Aggressively. Aggressively. They, and they tr they track down their uncles, their aunts. They I know people who fled the country, and they the one guy was called in Canada, and he said, have you heard of this? And I said, 
Yeah, I, I just heard from a guy in Spain. They were calling his work at Spain. Well, when you were on my <laughs> show, we had an email from a woman in Canada. That's right. We had so many emails. And she was su- she'd been suicidal. She told right. us. Right. Yeah. And and I'll put the link on that show right under this video. What needs to be done about this? President Obama got or actually was talking regularly about pressuring Congress not to double the rates right. of just one loan, and they wouldn't even debate that. Yeah, and, and that and that is important. You know, it, 7.4 million people would be affected students. Right. And as Pamela Brown, who was from Occupy, the Occupy Student Debt Campaign, said, you know, um, you know, here this, the president's been going all over the country for that one particular issue. And as you said, you know, they, they came out agreeing, John Boehner did even, but then they want to take money out of, uh, you know, out of funds that are related to, as they call it, Obamacare, the health system, that would hurt women. And I think it was pre-screening for cancer. That's how they were going to negotiate. And they've been doing that. I mean, look at the debt ceiling. Look at what they did to us. They are the GOP, as what's his name, Max Ornstein, um, at the American Enterprise Institute, just wrote this great piece. It's co-author. I can't remember the other. Someone from Brookings, I think. Yes. Yeah. And the, it's geo. The GOP is the problem, and he is absolutely right. And reporters are failing to call these people out on the facts. And this is the American Enterprise Institute. I know. I, I know. This is sort of the the beacon of uh, you know promoting free market ideology, and, and this guy is you know saying you know the GOP and their their plans are just. They're, they're harmful to the American people. So let's talk about solutions. What could the government do right now to deal with this problem? Well, I think the government at this point is realizing that they're going to have to deal with it in some form of absorption. There's also been a bill introduced on the House side that has 1% uh, support, unfortunately. It's, and it's reformist. It's uh, Rep. Hanson Clark. It's the student loan forgiveness bill, and it, and I, I praise it, and I, I've met with people in his office. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that he's out there because he, you know, he gets he gets to have time on the floor to talk about this problem. But when you look at it closely, and I've talked to people who are, you know, sort of experts as well, the higher ed sort of higher education analysts, they've said that, I mean, it's kind of more of a form like the income based for payment program. It's 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 a quicker. Um, time of, of forgiveness. I mean, so you're still repaying it. And that's that's not a problem. But I, I don't think that it's um, it's not significant enough. Right. It just isn't significant enough. Well, and let's remind people, the bank's got zero interest loans. Right. What's the average interest rate for students right now? I mean, it varies, but the the, the private loans can be as high as, I mean, they, they can fluctuate. Let's we'll, we'll be conservative. You know, 3 to 10% or more. And there's no, like, you know, you might have a grace period or forbearance with private loans for, oh, three to six months. It depends on, you know, all the lender. And then it's just too bad. That's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least with the federal government, they do offer forbearance and economic hardship. Yet, at the same time, when you do that, you're still accruing interest. So, um, I mean, this one guy I know, he, he borrowed $69,000 in 1998, I believe. And he's defaulted. And he now owes three hundred and twenty thousand wow. dollars. <laughs> and by by the time he retires, he will owe one and a half million dollars to the federal government. That's just cruel. And the guy lives in a basement with his parents. Uh. You know, it's about dignity too. I mean, and I and I and I we talk often. He's I kind of consider him a colleague, and and I say you know this is a systemic problem. So with solutions, I mean, one thing I know is Christine Pelosi. Um, She's an author. We have about a minute left. Okay. She uh, she made a suggestion that, you know, like a work project, uh, um, mm. WPA, mm-hmm. and in something that's that's fair, but get people back to work and, and offer some kind of, you know, let's just say loan forgiveness for them to go build bridges and, and give back to communities and, and all sorts of ways. Get them to teaching. Because the, the, the forgiveness programs are clearly not working if we're at a trillion dollars. Right. Because the government can say back, come back and say, we do have forgiveness programs, but they are so, the, the red tape for these programs are just ridiculous. Well, I'll put your blog under this video, and I encourage you to check it out and share it with friends, because Crin Johansson is following this very closely. And also, you're working on a piece about the suicides, right? Correct. Yeah. Crin Johansson, it's so horrible. Founder and executive director of All Education Matters. We're here in San Francisco. Thanks, Crin. Thanks.